Hey there, Wargamers, and welcome to another painting video. This week, it is going to be part two of my Urzable uh, painting, which is the Grand Seraphim from Raging Heroes Toughest Girls in the Galaxy 2 Kickstarter. So this time, uh, in part two, we're going to be working on the armor. So as you can see here, I've started off just by uh, appreciating it with uh, the black primer and then a gray overcoat. And I'm going to move on immediately to uh, the base coat of Angelic Blood using Minotaur. Now, much like the previous one, this isn't so much a tutorial. This is more just painting along with me and seeing how I go about doing it. Because uh, I'm not really trying to teach anything this time around. I'm just trying to show how I go about doing this. So with the pre-shading, we want to make sure we're putting the, the initial base coat on nice and thin because we want to have those those white highlights come through because uh, they're going to act as uh, as a quick way of highlighting and shading the model. Uh, so you got to make sure that you don't put on too much in any one area. Uh, now, if you look closely, you can see that I got a little bit too much on, on the right knee there. Uh, or sorry, the left knee, but that is just sort of, uh, it happens from time to time. Uh, but as you can see, I'm just thinly layering it on and we ha it gives us our initial base coat as a result. So you can see that the, the highlights remain intact. Nothing is too dark. Nothing is, is obscured. The detail is all there and that's going to provide a great base for us to start with. So moving on from there, we're going to do our first shade, uh, and I'm going to apologize for some of the blurriness. My camera was doing all sorts of weird things this time, but we're going to start with Druchi Violet. And uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to thinly apply it. We're going to try to make sure it doesn't pool anywhere, uh, but the, the purple is going to provide a very nice contrast into the deep recesses of the armor. Uh, and it's not gonna it's not gonna blend all together by making it just various shades of red like you could with a carbon crimson or something like that uh, Whereas with the the Druchi violet, we're gonna have that that contrast. We're gonna have that tonal difference uh, Almost going from like that deep purple to to a brighter red as you're gonna see as we go along so as you can see, I'm, I'm usually pushing the uh, the wash upwards. Uh, that's because I wanted to get into the recesses. I'm trying to always keep it going in the same direction. Just keeps it a little bit cleaner, uh, keeps brush strokes going the same way. Uh, and I find it helps to avoid pooling, at least in my case. So as you can see here, we, we now have a nice shade on it. There's a little bit of colorization on the red. It's not quite that, that bright angelic red anymore. Uh, so we have our depth. Next, we're going to move on to corn red, and as always, it's going to be very thin layers being applied to it, and this is just going to bring up the red of the armor plates a little bit more, uh, just so we're going to have more of that transition from the from the darker purplish red to something that's a little bit brighter. Now, with this particular model, there is a lot of very fine details on it, so I've had to I had to go through this very carefully, make sure I'm not obscuring details or removing uh, removing contrast where I don't want to. So as you can see here, I'm just I'm very lightly applying it to any raised area, things like the the armor plates um, or uh, any of the the edges that are are seen. So things like the pauldrons or the the shin guards, um, the uh, the knee pads, stuff like that. Basically anywhere where the red will be will be picked up and will be seen uh, and just give it a little bit more pop to it. So yeah, just continuing on with that. And it's all very, very thin down paints. Uh, what I've actually started doing is I've been putting a little bit of uh, dish soap into the water I used to thin my paints just to sort of relieve the surface tension a bit. And I've been finding it's been giving me a nice smooth application as a result. So there you go. You can see that we're starting to see the red build up on the on the armor itself while maintaining the, the deeper contrasts. And we're starting to get an idea of how it's going to look at the very end of it all. So moving on from the corn red, we're going to do our first highlight layer, which is going to be Wazdaka red. And once again, very thin. Uh, this is just going to be to build up the, the edges of it uh, so we can start seeing some of the, the light pop off it. So once again, we are just going to be hitting up the, the extreme edges on all the raised armor plates. And uh, as you can see, just the, the thin, careful, deliberate applications of, uh, of the paint here. And just every so often I have to reposition there. But uh, as you can see, just being very careful about how it's going on, making sure that I'm just getting the, the edges 
Uh, and once again, the fine detail just means that I have to be very careful about doing this because I don't want to, I won't want to wipe out any of the work I've already done on the, on the model itself. So just going a bit over the breastplate here, anywhere where the, the model is going to start picking up the light. So just making sure that we want to start building that, that color up. So and you want to make sure that you, you see every angle on it, because obviously this, this model is going to be seen, uh, be looked at a little bit closer uh, than others. At least that's my intention. I'm trying to paint this up a little bit more display piece than game piece. So I'm just trying to be very careful with it. So as you can see here, we're starting to see the, the highlights come out here. Uh, the WASDAC is really picking up the, the brighter parts of the armor, and we're starting to see that, uh, that greater contrast between the depths and the raised areas. Next up, we are going to go to our Evil Skun's Sun Scarlet, and uh, the intention here is just to give, that, give the armor that final highlight. Uh, of red so just to pick up the the most extreme edges of of the model so you'll see uh, once again very thin i'm just going over the the edges of it and i'm using uh, i'm using thin enough layers that uh, i'm just sort of pushing it along towards the highest point of the armor and i'm not worrying too much if you're if i'm not seeing the uh, the color appear right away uh, the idea here is that uh, I'm actually going to be applying, you know, two or three very thin, almost translucent layers of uh, of the Evil Sun Scarlet. Uh, and again, this is just to, to gradually build it up to maintain those transitions. Uh, so it's almost like I'm using it like a glaze, uh, but not quite. Like it's a, it's a very amateurish glaze, if I will. So as you can see, I'm just picking up the, the extreme uh, pinpoints of the armor itself. But we can see that the that the color is really starting to come through. We're starting to see those the, those really nice transitions between the darker reds and the lighter reds, and uh, it's going to provide a, a wonderful base for once we start adding in any of the contrast colors that uh, that will be going on the model as well, so like the skin tones or the the uh, the hair uh, or any of the cream tones as well. So we're just going through and we're just, we're just gradually building everything up. And as you can see, it's, it's starting to really come together in this regard. So our final, uh, our final step in this process is going to be the blood letter glaze. And this is just going to be to tie everything together. So we're going to be using a very thin application of the blood letter glaze, uh, but I'm not going to worry too much about where it's going in this case, because uh, it's going to be, I'm going to break it down a little bit more. I'm going to thin it down than just down to the pot. But this is just to tie everything together. It's going to it's gonna make the highlights pop just a little bit more. Uh, it's going to bring the reds together, just unify everything a bit, and just sort of complete that look that we're going for. So as you can see, just just carefully going over any of the uh, the flat surfaces with it, and it's it's thin enough layers that uh, that I'm prepared to do two, three, even four. I think in some cases, I think on like the breastplate and with the knees, I did three uh, three or four layers of it. But there you go. As you can see, that uh, the color is really starting to come together. It's really starting to shine through. Uh, we have the nice deep purple tones with the nice bright red highlights. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I know it's a little bit more rambling than some of my other ones, but uh, like I said, not a tutorial. Uh, if you enjoyed it, leave a comment below. Uh, and if you could, like and subscribe for more content, uh, hopefully on a weekly basis. And of course, check me out on various social media. Thanks for watching and happy wargaming.